logic. And there's way more people who are missing. Approximately 30. Yeah, we already got 13. Uh, Scream now names. Hi, I'm Rob. Hi, I'm Ben. I'm Steven. I'm Ian. I'm Chris. I'm David. And three spirits go silent. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Mouse, get out of here. Alright. You should explain this. You're good at this. Okay. Um, Pierce logic, otherwise known as existential graphs, is a logical proof system. Um, it's equivalent to propositional logic. Any statement you have in propositional logic is an equivalent statement in existential graphs and vice versa. Um, it has one logical operator, which is a cut, which goes around um, variables. And if two variables are next to each other, or two graphs are next to each other, it's just implicitly a uh, conjunction. Um, there are four inference rules. Double cut, insertion, erasure, and iteration slash reiteration. Um, and those are each used in steps in the proof for a All right, so what have we done so far? Oh no, Peg, why did you betray me? That was a lie correctly, I swear. Right. Um, so we got a lot done, uh, actually, compared to past semesters. Yay, efficiency. So we decided to do a complete refactoring about uh, a lot of the code because the main issues in terms of bugs and bugs we had to fix came from the fact that like a lot of like the old code was pretty hacky, and that was my fault. Um, so we're going in and we're refactoring all the UI, taking everything out and making collision not be extremely expensive like it was before. Um, do all this stuff. Uh, we also got an introduction and tutorial put in so we'll put it in. That's actually really nice. Uh, and then we can also have users now. Yeah, users and a data store that's in a working state. Um, we're using this thing called camera.js, which is this really cool like gesture recognition uh, JavaScript thing uh, to get into doing like. So Bra, our spiritual benefactor, uh, has a grant for putting Pierce logic onto like a classroom environment with tablets. So you just like distribute tablets and then they can use it in a very intuitive manner of doing like, oh, I want to do a cup. So you just like make a circle and do that, that type of stuff. So we're handling that with Hammer.js. Um, and actually, if you're interested in doing multi-touch gestures, uh, Hammer.js is fantastic. Uh, it's really cool. Um, we've also worked on uh, parsing propositional logic statements and converting them into existential graphs. Uh, Steven and Victor, who's not here today, worked on uh, rewriting a good parser uh, to uh, replace the horrible hacky one I wrote last semester. And um, this one, you give it um, you give it a propositional logic statement. It uh, parses it into a tree based on those statements. I think we'll show that later. Yeah. Yeah. And um, then once you have it as a uh, existential graph, uh, you wrote some software to take the existential graph and automatically place it on the screen so it uh, fits nicely. Plans. So storing and loading proofs is something that's been on our to-do list for a very long time, but we finally have a web backend and a somewhat stable like serializer for literally the entire thing. Um, so we're almost there. And after that, we need to load proofs. Uh, we're working on the touch gesture recognition stuff. Um, it might be more complex than initially thought, but that's just more fun because yeah. Hammer.js just has like a certain set of things it recognizes. Um, we're trying to come in with how to fit all of the necessary uh, events in the UI to Hammer.js. And reworking the whole proof stuff uh, using bump, bump, bump proofs. Basically, saving state between every single like step of the proof is complex because different rules need different states. Uh, specifically, like insertion needs to be constrained on one part of the tree, and doing that in a serializable form, yeah, it's kind of yucky. And then we're also working on basically when we have saving and loading done, you can basically go take another proof and say, hey, I want to use this because they did what I wanted to do. So you just take a state of the tree and then say, oh, well, this maps to this, this maps to this, and it does the rest of the proof up to that point. So you can like uh, diff and approve. Oh, this, uh, as it, the last slide mentioned, um, we'll be loading proofs into templates. 
So this is an example of a template. Um, if we want to do an indirect proof, which is basically, uh, we have a statement phi, we want to prove psi from it. And to do that, we have a proof that says phi and not psi yields a contradiction. So these, these steps are all will be built in. So you have your phi graph, you give it your psi graph. It'll load these steps into the proof. And this top line right here, uh, you can see that phi in there and that not psi in there will load a proof that assumes those two things and yields an empty cut, which is essentially false. So from, from that, we'll get um, phi and not psi and phi is false, and this whole proof will assume phi and give you not psi. So that's indirect proof or proof by contradiction. We'll also be doing uh, something similar with proof by cases and uh, other uh, proof templates like that. Yeah, well, uh, <laughs> 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 okay, so we changed the UI up a bit. Uh, we're using the newest Bootstrap. Uh, it's extremely unstable as it is now because, oh, there you go. Uh, a lot of stuff that's weird. But, let's see. Oh, look. It's not weird. Actually, it's kind of weird. But this is not the most stable thing yet because there's like 15 branches of the project that's being in work and then collapse it up to one. And we'll have one good demo, but they show you the small things. Like, here's a tour, it's actually really nice. Uh, here you go, highlight stuff, stuff. What did we use to do this? Uh, bootstrap tour. Bootstrap tour. <laughs> anyway, okay. it goes on for a while. Launching is hard. You need see. a lot of steps in the tour. Uh, signing in. Oh. I never made an account. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's Charles Pierce cool. taking control. Um, does that automatically stick my email address from the old one? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to force you to do this. Uh, okay. Thanks to everyone on that list, especially Rob um, and the usual suspects. And uh, Dimitri put a lot of effort into this. <laughs> um, some questions? Can you go back to that indirect proof thing? Because it looked to me like you were taking five and driving the five inside. I don't how that makes any sense. Um, yeah, we have, we show that we have, uh, phi is basically uh, a, a graph, which is a set of statements or a theory or something like that. And we just want to show from that there we have we can derive side. So where's like I'm just maybe not getting this, but like is, where's the other step which is like hey we've got some little says if by then side. Okay. So um each each of these lines so far you can see a rule next to it, double cut, insertion, iteration, and stuff like that. Except for this line right here. Uh, once we get to this graph, we assume in some other file we have a proof that says if you have phi and you have not psi, which is psi or with a cut around it, we can derive the empty cut, which is that innermost cut in that. So we'll we'll say we want to do a proof, an indirect proof, and we'll give it that file, and it'll load all these other steps in there, and load that file into that, and so we'll have a whole proof just from a subfile. Yes? So I guess that's the reason why that's the only arrow that's not labeled, because uh, the label is provided elsewhere? Exactly. The label is a whole so. Do you have a way of saving these proofs in a you know, more traditional text format? It saves down to JSON. I mean, does it look like with and symbols and or symbols and whatnot? Oh, that's entirely possible. Because this is, we have like PL to EG, and EG to PL is actually way simpler. Simplification on that is also pretty simple. Like, that's pretty solid. That's like a feature we can talk about. Um, so yes. Because our end goal is eventually, OK, we have these saving things, and then we can export. So like export into like a video or something showing this stuff, or export to like a list of actual logic statements. Like, what do you think this would be like ready for other things? Hopefully by the end of the semester, um, we're actually making good progress. Like full, full. Uh, yeah. 
Um, does it work in uh, different browsers? Yes. Well, yes. yes. <laughs> uh, but yes, the, the yes part of the yes uh, is it works in mobile browsers pretty well because uh, Chris fashioned it up to be stable uh, to screens and also you can use touch. Uh, but Firefox has an issue. So if you if you if you pay attention when we clicked, like the context menu was like out here. Um, it's because we had like a scaling issue between like where the event is hit and where it's actually hit on the map. Um, okay. So that's what I mean by no yes. So it but it so it's functional across browsers, it's just that the interface is bit odd? It's just one. Yeah. It's just big that scaling issue though. Any other questions? Yeah, it's a set of tabs just basically. <laughs> no. Tabs. tabs. Okay, just wait, can, can we have like a quick query? <laughs> Who likes tabs? Raise your hand. <laughs> Who likes spaces? You can't vote twice, twice Colin. Wait, I only voted once. I don't know why you're giving me shit. <laughs> <laughs> I think tabs win. Because tabs make sense. <laughs> We couldn't figure this out, so we ended this in like a die kick match, which I horribly lost. <laughs> and he was for text. No but since he's the group leader, he just invalidated the loss. <laughs> and now the forever work continues. Yeah, that's it. Um, yeah. Any other questions? No? Oh, oh, oh. You said Dimitri spent a lot of time on that? Yes. Why? <laughs> I think me and you both know Dimitri is a very odd person. <laughs> Tell him to work on his operating system. <laughs> <laughs> like, he went, like, this corner is actually quite intricate. <laughs> like, but the other corners, corners aren't. Yeah, that's, well, that's because someone else was in charge. It's upside down. <laughs> it comes upside down. Yeah. I started turning it upside down. Oh, yeah, I turned that one upside down because I wanted to piss them off. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so yeah, any other questions?